perspective. I'm always mixing between macro and micro, but uh, the smaller one, the smaller micro, is it, uh, do I say it right? Uh, so, uh, there are some kind of uh, regions in former Yugoslavia which still operate in a kind of a different way than uh, the region in, 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 on its own. So, for instance, Istria, where my family lives at the, at the moment, um, for, for us, uh, whether you say that you're from Zagreb, Istria is, is, is in Croatia. So, whether you say that you, you, were, you, you come as a tourist from Zagreb, or you come from Belgrade, or you come from Sarajevo, or you come from Ljubljana, you're kind of foreign. Uh, uh, like so, it's still this kind of a uh, um, very microcosm uh, of like uh, being uh, being Yugoslavia. We are a tourist destination. People come from all over the world and all over our former country, and there is still the same sentiment for somebody coming from Belgrade or coming from uh, uh, from uh, Zagreb, from the from the people who grew up in uh, former Yugoslavia in Istria. So you have the same kind of uh, uh, emotions and narratives and feelings. Uh, I, I've done uh, some, some ethnographic work there with, with, with the people, and that's some of my findings when I, when I uh, dig deeper into that. And uh, when there was a football um, uh, handball match, uh, and there was, a, uh, there was a match between, between Serbia and Egypt, and they were they played in Istria, of course, because it was the last of a. They, they, they know there will be less troubles if they play that match in Istria. So everyone was supporting Serbia because that's us. That's our. That, that, that's the same kind of a. Uh, emotionally, there was like so much attachment still as a kind of a. That, that's why I'm saying like, well, there are some kind of micro identities within one big identity of the split regions and republics and whatever, which also can can be taken into account to some extent. Dođi, Mikula. Dođi. Yes. I, I would respond to that. I uh, went to a book fair in Pula called Sanja Knjige u Istri and I actually lived through what you described. It was absolutely absolutely yeah. true. I made a mistake uh, because I made a speech there and I said how sorry I was not to have been translated into Croatian and they all said what do you mean not? Because they all counted the Serbian translation as covering the, covering the region whereas I was trying to accumulate the numbers. <laughs> Okay. We have one more question. Okay. I will just respond something to Istria, <coughs> because Istria is really like a special part of Croatia. I remember because uh, my parents have a holiday apartment in Istria, so we are spending every summer. We were spending every summer there since 1992, and uh, in this small uh, town uh, where we were, Cervar. There were also a lot of lot of refugees from both Bosnia and Vukovar, so it was really really uh, like uh, you could say uh, 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 if this was Karlovac or Zagreb or some other part of Croatia, you would say it uh, it's not really easy to live there, but in Istria. You would never say that uh, people have uh, had traumas there or something. They were all uh, acting like it's Yugoslavia all, all over again. And it's 1992, 1993, 1994 I'm talking about. So yes, I agree. Yeah, history is a special place. Yeah. History is a special place. And uh, I actually wanted to say something related to this. Uh, I'm a Yugoslav. I left uh, Yugoslavia in 84 to go to the United States. And uh, I've always remained Yugoslavia. I recognize my story, all your stories, and uh, it's really music to my ear. But uh, I go to former Yugoslavia frequently, to Belgrade, to Zagreb, to Split, to, uh, to Montenegro. Uh, and uh, I, my accent is neither Serbian, nor Croatian, nor Montenegro. And wherever I go, I feel a little bit uneasy because they always question where I come. 
come from, and then I'm never sure whether it's a, a question, a friendly question, or a question which puts me in the wrong uh, category. So uh, my question is, you were telling us how things move on, uh, and in some ways it was not that we remember Okay, well, I, I'll have a very quick story, which is somewhat <laughs> less about, um, but it's about East it's not about it's not about Axum so much, but several years ago I had a scholarship to go to Rijeka for two months to spend, to do whatever I want kind of thing, it was great. Um, and on my first day, which happened to be my partner's birthday, I was going to go to the police station to register myself, and she says, don't forget your passport. I was like, don't worry, I've got it sorted. We get there, shit. She says, I told you, I told you to bloody bring it. I'm pretty sure I brought it with me. That's an even bigger problem. Fundamentally, at some point in time, we figured out that I'd lost it somewhere on the steps of the Eka because we found my ticket, no, my plane ticket, but not my passport. And already my first vision, which tells you something about my own imagination of what the country has become, I imagined that already it was being publicly burned in the main central square uh, by Croatian nationalists. You know, terrible thought. By the time I got home, I frantically checked all my emails on Facebook, and on all of them there was a message, which started with Basha Putovnit. <laughs> a seven-year-old girl found it, brought it home. Dad wrote me an email. Dad brought me the passport and said, here it is. Um, I hope you have a lovely time in the egg. Um, you know, and some, some of my friends joked, yeah, had you done it in Split, you got a yeah, different story. <laughs> but, but I think fundamentally there is this kind of weirdness, because also in the Eka, when I was leaving from the bus station, I said, what do you want? I want Sokot Pomorandre. What do you want? Uh, Sokot Narandre. That's what you want. You know, so I mean, it's, it, you know, the national is not always the primary identity most people will always have. <laughs> Some people feel more regional, some people, I don't know. It just feels, it, it does feel like you say, things have moved on a bit since we've left, and that's okay. But there is a, um, a parallel which is not um, dissimilar to the Brexit vote in some ways, because we sit in a country where we know that the majority voted to leave the EU, and, uh, and yet most of the time when I'm at the university, I never meet those people. It's a kind of like, who are those people? I know who they are, yes. But at the same time, you have that, we were mentioning split, when I, I was very reluctant to visit Croatia, although I have a lot of friends living in Croatia, because I didn't know I have this kind of cut glass Belgrade accent, how that would play. Uh, and I have to say, in Split, um, I would walk through the town and I actually seen some pretty gruesome graffiti, you know, you sort of feel like a bar of soap already. But at the same time, when I went into a bookshop asking for books, etc., there were also people who were overcompensating for it. So I kind of somehow know that probably the majority of people in Croatia want their independence, they want their independence. And I know that they won't like my accent. There's nothing I can do about that. I have that accent. I'm not about to change. So we travel with our accents. Uh, to sort of uh, maybe wrap it up, uh, a student of mine, Tony White, whom you know, your fellow uh, your colleague and writer, he actually uh, went in the beginning of 2000s in a, in a footsteps of Rebecca West and uh, wrote this book, which is like a travelogue, uh, travelogue slash, you know, again, some kind of a love letter to the Balkans uh, called uh, Another Fool in the Balkans. Uh, it's a nice anecdote why it's called like uh, that, but it doesn't matter. But at one point he was in Zagreb, there was a, this uh, festival, literary festival, and then they asked him, what the, where are you going from Zagreb? Now, uh, it was like 2001. And he said, oh, and it was like loads of people eating like this festival, where it also like a beer festival and a lot of grilled meat and so on. 
and uh, and it was like a murmur and quite kind of a teeming with uh, with life and, and noises and so on, various voices. And then when he said, "Oh well, I'm going to Belgrade afterwards," he said there was like a total silence, you know, because for him, as a foreigner, as a British, you know, just moving from Zagreb to Belgrade, the most natural thing. This is my next destination where I'm going to kind of do a bit of field work. But at that point in time, in Zagreb, just anyone going to Belgrade, like, was a label like enemy of us in a way so but it changed so from 2001 to where we are now 2019 i think quite a lot of things changed i think some for better not all of them uh but uh we have, you know i think all of us are going to continue uh telling stories or inciting people to tell stories uh, learned from them i hope uh from listening to each other and with that i will wrap it up